What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TWA Motorsports and today, well today's gonna be a little bit different. So weather, um, it getting dark sooner, family, basketball with my son. I just haven't had a ton of time here lately guys. Obviously I work a full-time job, it's dark when I get home. You guys have seen a couple videos of me here in the garage and as you know I do most of my work outside. So when it's raining, on my day off or it's snowing or it's cold or it's dark obviously I can't do much so uh, I figured this would be a good time to make a video like this and so basically I want to do three things today guys the first thing I want to do is I want to show you some stuff that I've got laying around here in the garage for some future projects for some things that I've had maybe laying around for a while the second thing is on the community section there's a community tab in YouTube where you can kind of post comments pictures stuff like that and um, if you go to your subscriptions, if you're subscribed to the channel, it will show you anytime I post in the community section. But I posted, if you guys had any questions about me, the channel, the cars, the projects, um, post them down there. I'm gonna answer them today. I try to answer all of your comments when you guys post in a video, but just know that um, sometimes if you respond, after I've responded, I don't always get a notification, so I don't see those. And if there's like 500 to 1,000 comments, I just there's no way for me to go through and see what you've posted. So uh, if you start a new thread, instead of replying to maybe an old one, that helps me respond a little quicker. I'm able to see that. The other thing is if you put any profanity in there or any kind of link whatsoever, YouTube will scrub it and uh, I won't see it. So. Uh, let's get started. Oh, oh, the third thing. One more thing. The third thing is obviously I want to show the projects that you guys have been sending me pictures of. I'm going to try to put some in each video. So if you don't see yours in this one, it will be coming, guys. Um, I'm just trying to post a few in each video. But I love that. I love the fact that you guys are showing me your projects. They don't have to be GM. They don't have to be Corvette, Trans Am, Slam Trucks, Tahoes. It doesn't have to be any of the stuff that I have. Uh, if you have it, post it or send it to me because I love all cars just because obviously I'm pretty much a GM guy doesn't mean that I'm not going to put your picture up if it's a Ford or a Dodge or whatever else you guys might have I love the fact that you guys are doing that and I want you to continue but let's start with some of the stuff I've got laying around the garage or some new stuff that I've got so I think the first place we'll start guys is a couple uh, it's probably been about a month ago now I bought a new toolbox I did show you guys that I, it is kind of dark over here sorry but um, with a lift up it kind of blocks my lighting but I do love this thing I did say that it wasn't enough room like I thought it was gonna be to replace the two that I had so I did buy this end cap I'm absolutely loving this toolbox guys it is worth every penny if you guys need a toolbox I think this is the best bang for the buck I didn't want to spend five grand on one um, so this is probably seven hundred dollars all in absolutely love it I also bought the towel rack for the end and uh, that makes it nice for grabbing towels quick instead of um, them just setting up on top of something now you can see I've kind of <laughs> I've kind of got this piled up with stuff but I've been trying to find homes for everything since I've got this new stuff I haven't had this end cap for very long still trying to find homes for stuff and you'll see that as we go through this but uh, up here we do have the LED lights that I bought for the um, truck i just put those on in the last video i also bought a set for the tahoe so look for that very soon uh should be putting those on hopefully really soon other than that i uh, still got to move this box down to the basement garage if you guys don't know i do have a tandem basement garage so back to back and uh, my old trucks down there and i have a 55 two-door post that i've been it's kind of a dream lifelong project that i've had so we'll be getting into that but it's going to be a long, long time before we get into that stuff. But anyway, that thing needs to go down to the basement so I can free up some room. Also got my fender roller there on the ground that um, I haven't found a home for yet. Like I said, I've, this is a big mess and it drives me crazy because I'm pretty, I'm a pretty organized guy. But down there on the bottom, we do have some BMR lower control arms. Those are adjustable lower control arms. I bought those about a year ago. Those are obviously for the Trans Am up here. To the left of that, the old alternator off the Camaro. I needed a core. I robbed the one off the Trans Am just to get the Camaro back going. That is why it is down there. Other than that, on this rack of junk, is uh, the HIDs are underneath there for the truck. That will be coming very, pretty soon as well. Hopefully, anyway, if we can get some good weather, that'll be coming soon. I have the green cats from Cooks off the SS. The guy gave them to me when I bought it. He 
took them out so obviously it doesn't have any catalytic converters on it other than that i've got some random hids that i will be putting on the tahoe this box is completely packed full of tagged and bagged nuts and bolts for the trans am and uh this is pretty much stuff that i've taken off of other cars the caliper paint box and these are actually off my 2018 um, gmc the sierra that i had uh, the chrome door handles you guys know that i always well pretty much always color match door handles i just think it looks way nicer so those are the old ones if you guys know anybody that needs those hit me up uh, let's go over to the other side and well let's look in the truck so I will tell you guys the Tahoe is lowered it is 100% finished and you will be catching that video I'm hoping Monday is what I'm hoping for so uh, be looking for that those are the boxes for the shocks and uh, some other parts that I had I've also got a radio down there I just bought that. That is going to be going in the Tahoe, or at least that's the plan as of now. I got the old shocks off the um, Tahoe. I actually just finished it, so it is going to be very, very soon, guys. It's taken me like two weeks to do that video. Got the old um, rotors off of the truck here. Just haven't, I need to recycle them, or I, I was hoping somebody local here, uh, I could just dump them off at their place because I don't really have a spot to put stuff to recycle. Other than that, on the table, don't get excited. The Frankenstein boxes are actually stock heads for the SS. I think I've showed this in the video before, but that is what those guys are, stock LS3 heads. I've also got the stock LS3 cam, the stock LS3 manifold, and um, push rods here. So we're getting very, very close to starting that project. That is my next goal now that the Tahoe is lowered, is to get the car in here. We're going to have to shuffle some things around, but I want to get the SS up on the lift and get that thing back to stock. That has been a goal of mine for a long time. But um, I think that's about all the stuff I've got laying around in here as far as parts go. Uh, I probably have some others that I just, that are probably downstairs or in the bottom garage and I won't take you guys down there. But I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod and we're gonna answer some of those questions that you guys asked me in the community post. So like I said, I posted on the community section with some questions and I'm going to go through those. There's probably about 20, 21 of them. Not a, not a ton, but um, some of them may be duplicate, but I'm going to answer them. And sorry guys, if it's echoey in here, we are in a garage. I probably need a better mic setup, maybe one that pins on me. That would probably help things. But I do have my phone here because I didn't remember all the questions and I uh, kind of want to say who said them or ask them, whatever. But the first question comes from Nico. He said, what was your first car? My very first car was an S10 Cameo, and uh, it was kind of rare. It was a, a four-cylinder five-speed, so it was a Cameo EL, and uh, it was one of my favorite vehicles. Still, I'm, I'm still kind of an S10 guy, even though I haven't had one in a long time. Uh, that square, boxy-style S10 from like the late 80s, early 90s are still one of my favorites. I still look at them when I see a lowered one. I, obviously, I like lowered stuff, but... Nico asked that, and so that is my first car. Uh, Sutton asked, uh, have you ever planning on buying a tow pig of sorts for your channel? I love all full-size stuff you do. So, um, guys, I've always wanted a bagged dually, like 88 to 98. It's just something I really don't have room for, and I probably wouldn't use it a ton because I don't haul a bunch of stuff. Most of the time when I buy stuff, I either drive there or have it hauled to me. Um, I do have a car trailer. I have a, a really nice car trailer, as a matter of fact, that hasn't been used in probably over a year and a half, maybe two years. But a bagged dually, crew cab dually has always been something I've wanted. So if at some point I find one, that may be something I buy. Um, Riley asked, is there any plans for, the, for a new vet? So if you're talking like a C8, probably not. Uh, I'm not in love with that body style, which I wasn't in love with the C7 when it came out and it grew on me. Now, um, I will tell you that as far as a C8 base model, not a chance. I'm not even looking at that. It's not even in my wheelhouse. Now, if they come out the Z06 or a ZR1, maybe. Uh, it'll just have to see what they look like when they get here. Um, Chris asked, what, what do you recommend for better brakes on a Trans Am? Uh, to be quite honest with you, I guess it depends on what you're gonna do with it. You know, a lot of people criticize me for doing the uh, power stop brakes on the Trans Am, saying that you should on CTSV brakes, should on C5 brakes. To be quite honest with you guys, people have went eight second quarters with those brakes. Now, if you're looking for something lighter, obviously Strange makes drag brakes and the CTSV brake or maybe an upgrade like 
uh, Willwood or something like that are probably better for like circle track or um, like autocross, something like that. But for what I'm doing with the car, I, I mainly wanted it for the looks. It does stop better because I did add some, some new brake lines and the cross drilled and slotted rotors do help. It does stop better. I will tell you the pedal feel is firmer. It does stop better. So it really depends on what you're using the car for. Uh, how <clears throat> I, I, I'm probably going to butcher this name. Efren says, how smooth does the Silverado feel with the helper bags and the Beltec air, sh or air shocks? They're not air shocks. They're just Beltec street performance shocks. And um, it, to be quite honest with you, it doesn't ride like factory. I'm not going to try to put it off like a lowered truck rides like every other thing. But I will tell you it rides really nice. I think it rides um, really close to factory. And uh, the more air you put in those bags, the more harsh the ride is because it doesn't have any travel. So it does help. It doesn't. It keeps you off the bump stop, so it's not jarring. It does give you a, a, more of a soft feel in the back, but um, it, it doesn't ride like stock. I will tell you guys that. So I don't want you to think that you're going to lower a truck and it's going to ride like a, you know a Cadillac or something. It's just not going to happen. Hector asked, uh, which was the first car slash truck? you lowered or dropped so uh in 2000 in late 2000 i bought the very first extreme blazer that hit springfield missouri so that's obviously i'm from missouri springfield is uh, about 30 miles from me actually where i work and um, i bought a brand new blazer s10 blazer extreme i actually was looking for an s10 but they had just gotten this in and it was black i probably should never bought it but i love that thing i literally just babied it but that is the first thing I lowered, and uh, with the help of my uncle, who is kind of the reason I started lowering all my stuff anyway, um, we did a two, three drop on it. It already had like a two inch drop from the factory, but we did another two, two inches in the front with spindles and three inch blocks in the back. So that was the first thing I lowered. Um, GML asks, uh, what's the email to send pictures to? So guys, if you wanna send pictures of your projects, TWA Motorsports at Hotmail. So basically the name of the channel at Hotmail is if you guys want to send any pictures. So I posted a second post today, uh, or maybe it was yesterday, I don't even remember, with the second round of questions. So we'll go through those. There's only, there's not that many. Um, can't wait to see more Tahoe content. It's not really a question, but um, yeah, so it's coming. Obviously, like I said, and you guys saw, um, the Tahoe is lowered. And uh, so I'm hoping to have that video up by Monday. That's a ton of editing because obviously I did a step-by-step how-to on what I used and um, how to do it. So that takes a, quite a bit of editing. I, I'm pretty sure I'll have it done though by Monday, if not Thursday at the absolute latest. Um, more TA, it's been on the back burner for too long. So I get a lot of questions about this. I get a lot of comments, a lot of hate, uh, people leaving the channel, they don't like me anymore. Um, the Trans Am's not going anywhere. I have no, and there's other questions that I'll address more of this, but the Trans Am is going to get worked on. I'm waiting on parts, and I'll, I'll get into that here a little more in just a second. But um, yeah, we're going to work on the Trans Am, I promise. I'm not promising like in the next video, but it, it's going to happen. Uh, Driven by Gears says, uh, oh, okay, so this is a pretty common question. So Jason and Driven by Gears both have this question. What do you do for a living? You have so many cars, I can only have one at a time. So this is a question I get asked all the time and guys, I'm not rich or my wife's not rich. I don't come from money. And uh, honestly, this stuff is pretty obtainable. I don't, I don't have anything on this channel that, I mean the ZR1 may be a stretch or the, the new Z06. And, um, but other than that, I, this stuff's relatively cheap. Like I think I paid five grand for this truck and I paid like 18 grand for this. Now, uh, and the Trans Am was like 12 grand. It, it, it's not a lot. Um, I mean, it may seem like a lot because I have so many cars, but uh, so what do I do for a living? I guess I'll get to that question. Uh, I work for a cell phone company, so I'm a manager at a retail store. Um, hours kind of suck sometimes, but the pay is decent, and, and I'm not making like six figures by any means, but um, I, I basically spend my money wisely, I guess you would say. I'm, I don't drink. I don't do anything stupid with my money. I don't bet, gamble, anything like that. So I use my money for, you know, car stuff and family stuff. And that's just, that's my hobby. So that's what I do. So that hopefully answers that question. Cell phone store. I'm a manager of a cell phone store. 
and it's a I don't even want to say the name of it it's um, it's a pretty common company you guys can look up what they make but I'm not gonna talk about as far as money I make that's pretty obtainable you can google that and see what a retail cell phone a corporate cell phone company manager makes um, Eric ask uh, big fan of the G or he doesn't ask anything he just says like the content big fan of the GMC that it seems to be like this truck is more popular than anything I have on the channel and it is becoming a huge favorite of mine I don't foresee this thing going anywhere it and like I've talked about I flirted with the V8 swap, and I'm not sure that that's completely off the table, but um, I want to give this thing to my son. And to be honest with you, I'd have to dumb it down with HP tuners, which I could do uh, for him to drive, but the six cylinder is gutless. It's really, it's not fast. That's probably what he needs. And I don't know that I can hand him over a truck that's this nice. Maybe after it gets a couple dents and scrapes, maybe I can do that, but. Um, Corey asks, is there any way to get more power out of a 4.3? I have a single cab just like yours, uh, except it's not as nice, lol. So, um, honestly, I think you're better off not spending money on the six-cylinder. I just don't think you're going to get any real performance out of it. I will tell you guys that on the S10, the Extreme Blazer that I bought, I bought every possible thing you could buy. I did electric fans. I did... Cold air intakes, I did H, well I didn't do HP tuners, that wasn't really a thing at that time. I did a power programmer or whatever. It didn't feel any faster. Uh, so it might have got a mile per gallon better in gas mileage, but I just don't think it's worth spending the money on it. You'd be better suited spending or saving your money doing a V8 swap. A stock V8 um, would really just be the best option for you in one of these trucks. It's just not worth the time. It's a pretty easy swap. It's pretty straightforward. I just wouldn't spend any money on the six cylinder. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, if you wanted to find a wrecked cyclone maybe and use like the injection system off it, that's pretty much the problem on these four threes is uh, there's no real way to change injectors because they're all kind of bunched in and uh, you'd have to change the intakes. It's just not worth the time or trouble. So uh, Mario says he has a 2018 5.3 uh, Silverado and um, He's asking about power upgrades. Should I do a supercharger, heads or cam? What do you think? Uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of doing mods like that to a truck that's like your daily driver. I guess it depends on what you're going to do with it. If the truck's going to set, do what you want. But I will tell you that when you start adding heads and cam to a car, it wrecks drivability. I don't care what people say. The cam in the SS is supposedly pretty tame, and it's a good cam, and you could probably daily drive it, but it would it would be so annoying. I, I, I can't daily drive that car. It's so, and my wife hasn't even been daily driving it. It's annoying. I personally think if you're looking for more power, a supercharger is the best option and keep everything else stock. So if you have to upgrade injectors or whatnot, that's fine. Uh, don't go crazy, but I think as far as like a stock supercharger on that motor makes great power. You're not sacrificing any drivability. That would be my suggestion to you. And when I say that, I mean like a root style blower, like the LSA blower, LS9 blower, um, LT4 blower, stuff like that. Not a pro charger. Pro chargers are really whiny, they're noisy. It gets old after a while. Sometimes it's nice to just hop in something that works and drives. And I'm not a good, obviously I mod everything, so I'm probably not the right guy to ask for that. but. Uh, Scott asks, are you waiting for turbo part or turbos for the Trans Am? Any kind of time frame? Um, also, did you get in the, any brake fluid? Or did the brake fluid remove any paint on the calipers? Um, no, the brake fluid didn't actually remove any of that G2 caliper paint, which I was kind of surprised. It did drip on a couple spots, but it didn't take the paint off. And I had a towel that I would have been able to see the paint on, so I, even like a light layer, it didn't take any of the layers off. As far as the Trans Am, I talked to the guy who, obviously I put a huge down payment on the turbo kit. Um, I, I think I told you guys that when I talked about it. I did put money in that I'm not going to get back. So it's, we're 100% on on that deal that the turbo kit is happening. Um, I talked to him recently. He thinks they're going to ship by the end of February. Now, does that mean that we're going to put it together and it's going to be ready? No, there's other stuff that we got to do, but um, we'll at least have the parts by then. So... I know a lot of you guys have been upset about me not working on the Trans Am, not doing stuff on the Trans Am, but that's that's what's going on. So yes, it is happening. Um, 
I should have parts by the end of February or the beginning of March is what it sounded like. Um, the Slow Silverado asked, do you sell your vehicles to certain people? How does that work? Just wondering where all your cars you get rid of end up. Um, thanks for the videos. I really don't. I list them on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I really don't list a lot on Craigslist anymore because you have to pay to list on Craigslist. And I think that's ridiculous. It really depends on what I'm selling too. So like a truck like this, a car like this, probably I would use Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'm not huge on Facebook. I just literally just downloaded it because I buy stuff on it just to browse. I, I'm, I don't ever post anything on there. But um, yeah, I, if it's more expensive, so like the... The Corvette that I just sold, you know, you, when you're dealing with like 60,000 up or heck, even with 40,000 up, I, I try to get on like forums that like specialize in that stuff. Like my vet was sold on the Corvette forums, auto trader, car guru, stuff like that. Bigger purchases like that. People don't just buy off Facebook marketplace. So, um, and as far as where they end up, most of the people that I sell more expensive stuff to, like both the Corvettes, those guys keep in touch. They send me pictures all the time. The ZR1 has recently sold again. Even the guy who bought it from him, I, I talked to that guy. So it's um, sometimes certain cars you keep in touch with. Some of them you just want to like get out of your life and never look at it again. Um, Pat, this is the guy I work with. He took me to get my Tahoe from the alignment shop today. And the reason he said this, I was giving him a hard time about how he drives. He says, do you drive aggressive or chill? Uh, I'm pretty, I, I'm a pretty relaxed driver. Uh, as far as like, I don't, hot rod cars all the time now I do rip on cars that's what I buy them for is to play with them but I, I don't go stoplight to stoplight I'm a pretty easy driver I'm always trying to get the best uh, mileage I guess you can out of a vehicle I don't take off fast at stoplights uh, now if somebody rolls up next to me and I'm in something yeah maybe I'll I'm gonna play but uh, I don't do it all the time uh, Justin asked me what kind of music I listen to uh, I, I'm pretty eclectic. I, it's pretty mood based. So, a majority I'd say of the stuff I listen to is rap. I was brought up on country music, and uh, I still love country music. I love rock. Uh, I play guitar, so you know you can't not like rock music. I feel like if you play guitar, I like classical music. Um, I like gospel music. Even I, I like every kind of music. So there's not like one set music I listen to. But I'd say that a majority of the time, because I have a teenage son, it seems to be rap. And uh, we try to listen to clean rap, when we, but um, yeah, rap music is probably probably what we listen to the most. So um, I want to see more Tahoe videos. Just picked up mine, um, and then also I want to do I want to start making YouTube content. And uh, how do I do it? And what do I say? So <laughs> I'm probably not the best guy to ask. So I've fumbled up YouTube crap for I don't know how long. I'm still screwing up. People don't like my videos. People do like my videos. Uh, I'm probably not the best guy to ask. I literally have listened to people talk about how they grow their YouTube channels or what they do and you know kind of the ways that they edit videos, what they use, what they use to film. I, I watched a lot of stuff on that before I got started, but I'm telling you the hardest thing is what I'm doing right now and that's talking to nobody. I'm literally, I know I'm talking to you guys on the video, but I'm talking to a camera in my garage at 10 o'clock at night and nobody's around and that's the hardest thing to get used to is to feel comfortable in front of the camera and guys I still I've probably done three to five takes on the very first part of this video because I didn't like what I said or I stuttered or I said um too much I say um a lot if you noticed I, I say that quite a bit and I try to cut that out I try to think what before I say car or truck or SUV or I but hey you're gonna it, it's just you get better with time I feel like I've gotten a little better let me know if you think so but um, I always have room to grow and always film on the best equipment you have. This I'm using a GoPro and it's an older Hero, but um, I think it's a Hero 7. I should upgrade equipment, I know. Um, other than that, the last question I have, have you ever thought about doing a mini split AC unit for your garage? Uh, that's the last question. I don't... I don't work in my garage much. To be quite honest with you, when it's summertime, I really would rather be outside because the air's moving around. And if I had a garage with AC, would I be in it? Probably. This garage is too small to do a lot of work in. So um, if the lift wasn't tied up by the Trans Am, which that's coming down soon because I've got to get the SS on it, but um, I still probably wouldn't do a ton of work out here. Now it is nice to be able to roll around on this chair and do work in the garage um, on the lift if I just want to roll around. but. Uh, majority of stuff I do outside, would I like to have a shop? 
Um, I, I'm well. Let's answer the question. No, I'm not going to put AC in the garage. Uh, I just don't work in here enough to warrant doing that. But would I like to build a shop? Absolutely. I want a shop. Like you wouldn't believe. My wife wants me to have a shop so she can like park right in the middle here and not ding anything. Uh, so that may be something that we do in the future. Well, I say something, it, it's gonna happen. I just don't know how long it's gonna be. I'd love to build like a 50 by 50 shop. We get all my stuff out there, all my tools and everything. And uh, it would help with videos because then I could film at night because I'd have better lighting. I'd be, uh, I'd put a two post lift in to go along with the four post and uh, just have pretty much everything out there and could go out there, shut the garage when I'm done and uh, not have to worry about moving stuff around. So. Uh, that guys, that's all the questions that I had. I, I know there was, it seems like I've been talking forever. There's a lot of, there was, there wasn't that, that many questions, but, uh, I wanted to give you guys as thorough answers as I possibly could, but uh, give it to give you a small update on some of the cars that I've got. Obviously, uh, we talked about the Trans Am, the kids coming hopefully end of February, early March. The truck here, like I said, I don't really have a ton more plans for it right now. Uh, there's too much other stuff going on. I want to drive it. I still haven't got it aligned because of the brake issue. I think I've got that fixed, so we will be driving this soon. Hopefully, I can make a couple videos, get some good pictures of it. Um, then we'll do a video on the HIDs on it and how much I have invested in it, which is going to be astronomical. It'll probably blow your mind and you'll think I'm crazy because it is a six-cylinder truck. And I spent way too much on it because I wanted a green one. When I was looking, there's only three for sale in the United States. And I looked on every possible spot you could look. And I found this one and it was rust free. That's really my main goal is to find a rust free one. But we'll talk about what I spent on it. I'm talking paint, um, body work, all the panels, uh, or as far as like parts that I put on it and whatnot. Um, Corvette uh, here, I really don't have a ton of plans on anytime soon. I, I want to lower it. I did buy a shifter for it because I hate the long throw of the shifter and I want to drive it quite a bit, but um, I don't have a ton of plans other than lowering it, tinting the windows and putting that shifter in anytime soon. So I don't um, foresee me doing like, I'm not blowing this apart. We're not doing heads and cam. Not right now anyway. Now down the road while I do that, I don't know. Um, I, there, I, I'm still on the fence about um, buying another Corvette. So, um, the Tahoe, I've got it dropped. Like I said, we'll I'll have that video up hopefully Monday, Thursday at the latest. Uh, still got some headlights, taillights. Need to do some paint correction on it. Uh, I need to do paint correction on the vet. Um, the Buick, I'm hopefully going to sell once winter's over. And what else do I have? Oh, the SS. We need to get the SS in here and strip down, put back to stock. That is happening next. Uh, so uh, hopefully I don't bore you guys. I'm going to go step by step on all the stuff I'm taking off of the SS and we are getting it back to stock. Probably going to sell that too. The truck, obviously I bought a flatbed truck, pulled the motor and transmission out for the uh, 52 Chevy. That is hopefully happening right after we get done with the SS. So we have so many projects. It's like consuming my life. Uh, I've contemplated taking a step back from YouTube for a little bit. Um, just to spend more time with family, maybe going to one video a week. I've been trying to do two videos a week. Now, if I could do more videos like this where I was just talking, that would be something I would be a little bit easier on me uh, because I'm not showing you a ton of stuff. And it takes a ton of money to do this as far as not, I say a ton of money. I don't have a ton of money, but um, it, these, the stuff I'm doing to these cars isn't free. Okay, so to go along with buying the cars, you know, a set of brakes for this truck was three, almost $400. The paint for the calipers was a hundred bucks. So you're talking about $500 just in that. And uh, YouTube doesn't pay for that. So I'm not making enough. I'm not like some baller YouTuber that's making a thousand dollars a day uh, off the videos that I make. It's just not, um, I'm just not. So uh, it's expensive to do this stuff. So that's another reason I thought about taking a step back is to just um, not only spend more time with family, but to, um, you know, save money for bigger projects or to do different stuff. Maybe I can find a cheaper alternative to spending money on every video, maybe making more videos like this, more driving videos, more going places, doing stuff, more family stuff. Let me know if you guys want to see that stuff. But, uh, I think that's about it guys. Um, I've tried to give you everything that I know, all the questions that you answered. Like I said, if you post in the comments, I try to answer every single question that you guys give me, but um, since that's it, let's take a look at a few of your projects. Like I said, if you don't see it in this video, 
Um, it will be coming, so don't don't give up on me. I've got a ton of pictures here recently, and so um, I think that's about it. Check out Monday's video or third and Thursday's video. I'm gonna try to post two videos next week, but um, we'll have some Tahoe content up for you guys on one of those two days, so you guys can see it all drop. It looks amazing, I will tell you. And for all the haters that hate four-wheel drives um, being lowered, I'm sorry. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, let's take a look at some of your projects. Thank you.